Hi everyone, happy Friday. It's Patty from PS Paper Crafts and today we have a really cool card. It's called a square column fun fold card. Isn't that cool? So it actually folds so you can put it in and I think it's pretty just like this if it would just to open with the strips of green between or the, the borders of green between the emboss layer. But it does open and you can write a little sentiment in there, but you will see it. The other option is you can write the sentiment back here and, um, you know, just maybe put a, a little one <laughs> in there. Uh, so isn't that pretty? And this is what it looks like. So it's standing up. So this I used, I pulled out the old Cheerful Daisies. I knew I wanted to use this embossing folder. This is the Fun Patterns embossing folder and it's an online exclusive and it's really cool it has two folders and i just love the daisies with the kind of dotted circles around them so i i wanted to use this and the color is shy shamrock so i wanted to use that and then i was like well let's put some daisies on it so i went and dug out my cheerful daisies uh stamp set and then the dies that coordinate and i just did i cut out these three and then i cut them apart because they all come it's one die and you could just very easily cut them apart and then I cut out these and laid them on top and just colored it with Daffodil uh, Delight. Cut out some leaves. So when I have a big die cut like this and I just want the leaves to be green, I'll just put paper here and run it through so I'm not wasting a whole sheet again unless I want the whole color. And what else? And I did the sentiment. Uh, wishing you the brightest birthday and I use this to die cut that so that's this card and then I just stamped these little flowers inside I wasn't sure whether to stamp or not but I like it so that is the card that I used um, for the sample and you know I always change it up and use different um, different products for the one that will make that I'll demonstrate so I decided for today's card where do I have it I want to use this paper. It's so pretty. It's the Thoughtful Journey Designer Series paper. And we've had papers like this in the past where it has these beautiful, beautiful patterns. So let me just pull out some of them and show you. So I made a card where I die cut this with the country corner dies. I just have it here. So I have this was cut out of here. And then I used another piece to create the background. I think another side of one of the sheets. Let's see if we can find it. I wanted it to um, just kind of be plain, but not to, um, but and, and have different colors and kind of coordinate with the colors. So isn't this pretty. I think it's gorgeous, and you can do some die cutting, pretty die cutting with some of these kind of things um so anyway so this is the sheet that i'm using and i'm going to show you how i die cut it or i cut it not die cut it but cut it because i wanted um i wanted this low piece to be front and center here because i'm going to decorate it so we'll get to that um so i'm using blackberry bliss one of my favorite favorite colors and i think it matches here very well and what i did was i cut off the bottom so that it would be um what is it five and no five and three eighths where's my directions here they're right next to me so this uh the the D designer series paper is going to be five and three eighths and then you're going to have four pieces so i use white and die cut or embossed this uh these panels so these are all five and three eighths and then i have different sizes these three are the same and then this is a little bit shorter but i'll have all the measurements in a project sheet below um there's a link below the video that you can go to and you can print it out and it has pictures um, measurements and then instructions so watch along and then you can go back and get the measurements um, so first we have a piece of eight and a half by eleven and we are going to get our trimmer out and I want to cut off uh, I want to cut it to five and a half so we'll go to five and a half and we'll use our cutting blade the dark blade and then I have to pull my arm out 
So you can do this one of two ways. We want to do eight and one quarter, or ten and, my goodness, I can't talk today. Ten and one eighth, right? So we're going to go ten and then one eighth. The other is you can um, cut off seven eighths because this is 11. So if you took cut off seven eighths off of this side, is that right? You'll get 10 and one eighth, right? So you could do it either way. If you don't have the arm, you can do that. But we are gonna do some scoring. You, If you don't have the arm, you can use a score tool if you have one. So this one, we're going to do the 10 and one eighth side is gonna be up here. And we are going to score at four and a quarter. So this is our card base, right? So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. That's our A2 size card. Just that's where we get that. Then we're gonna move it in and do five and three quarters. And we're creating our column now. And then we're doing seven and one quarter. And then the last one is eight and three quarters. And again, I'll have this all in a project sheet, so don't worry about writing it down or catching up or any of that. Okay, so I think we are done with this. We'll put it away. And this is what we have left. Um, it's a good piece to have to hold on to. So now we're just gonna fold these and burnish them and this creates our column. So I'll just fold them all and then I'm going to get my bone folder. And they're all the same size except for this last piece is a little bit smaller. And that's what allows the fold to work nicely. Sometimes if everything is the same size, they kind of bump into each other and it adds some bulk and then it doesn't lay nice. So a lot of times that last fold will be a little bit shorter. Okay, so now you can see we have our column. Now before you do anything, we wanna decorate it, stamp on it, all of those things, because once it's together, you know, you could glue something here, but it's just a little awkward and um, you don't want to stamp. You can't stamp up here. So make sure you do your decorating. You can add embellishments afterwards, after it's up here, so you know what it looks like. But if you're actually gonna stamp on this, I would do it first. So let me just show you this. I already cut it and I'll show you how I cut it. So again, I wanted this to be low in the center. So I cut this, so I cut the bottom to make it um, five and three eighths. So I cut off this bottom. This is a six by six sheet. And then I have this. So I cut it <laughs> like this is like a quarter of an inch because if I, I, I didn't want this, I wanted the low. I hope this makes sense to you. I didn't want it to be like here. I wanted it to be down. So you don't have to do this, but I cut like a quarter of an inch and then that got me here. And then I cut this and where's my last piece? And then I cut this and I have this little strip left over. So you've got enough pieces and you don't have to do what I did. <laughs> I just wanted this, the front and center to be this low because I am gonna decorate it. I hope I didn't confuse you. So we are going to add these to our fold. So I'm just gonna get some liquid glue and glue them all down. And then we'll decorate that front panel. So this side of the paper would be good for die cutting. Like if you wanted to die cut flowers or clouds or something like that. I do like um, to look at the papers, I, I get ideas of what it reminds me of, water, uh, sky, you know, you can kind of look at it and say, oh, that looks like it could be water. Maybe I would do an under the sea or a beach scene or something like that. So some of these patterns are really fun and they look like they were watercolored, like an artist watercolored them. So see, it's not, it's not exact, like this piece should be here. 
but I think it flows nice, so I'm okay with it. And then we'll do this one. So these are the pieces that I cut out of white cardstock, and then I just embossed them with that embossing folder. And I think this is so pretty with the um, Blackberry Bliss. Blackberry Bliss, if you ever follow me, you'll know it's one of my favorite colors. I just love it. I was going to put white, like a layer of white behind it, um, but I decided that it didn't need it. Sometimes with dark colors, I like to just put a layer of white. And if I were to do that, I would make the white these sizes and then I would come down maybe an eighth of an inch. Nope, I don't want to do that. Ooh, I almost ruined it while I'm talking. Do I want to do that? No. What did I do here? Okay, I'm good. <laughs> so this one, I'm glad I didn't put that down. This one is going to go out here. So when it's, um, and I just want to fold it and make sure it looks, it looks good top and bottom. I like to try to make them go same across. So this is going to glue down like this. Okay, so see how this is lower? Oh boy, come on. <laughs> so this is lower. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to put this piece here with some uh, baker's twine and a sentiment up there or down there, I have to decide. So that's what it'll look like. And that's why I wanted it lower. I don't know if it matters. So to get this piece, let me just put my glue on here, my tap cap on. I used, um, so I'm using the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set. And we're going to do Thinking of You Fondly. And there's dies that go with this. And the die that I used, I already did this, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I used this one. Ooh. I have to put these on my magnetic sheets here. I use this one. It has leaves and stems, and then it has flowers. So I die cut it twice. So I have a mossy meadow. And then I have a blackberry bliss. And what I did was I just snipped off the flowers of the blackberry bliss I even did kind of the buds so I just snipped it off and I wouldn't do them all first because you have to make sure that you have the right flower to go with the right um, flower so if you cut them all off you might you know have this one up here or something you might get confused so I just put a little dot of glue and then I used the putty end of my Take Your Pick tool, and I just laid it on the glue and put it in place. It was a little bit time consuming, but I really love how it came out. I guess it's better on the white. So I just went and I cut all of these off, glued them on here, and then I ended up with this. And this is what my piece looked like after I cut everything off. I don't think I would use it, but I wanted to show it to you. Okay, so we have this piece done. I'm not going to go through all of it because you don't need to sit here and watch me <laughs> do that. That would be a little crazy. Um, but there's some great dies in this set. So some of the dies, um, this die I believe cuts out this, and this die will cut out this. But then there's dies that just stand on their own, like this one and this one. Um, there's this one here that you could do the same thing I did, cut it twice. And then this one you could just lose, use as leaves. There's some leaves. So um, I think it's a pretty nice set. I love having these kinds of sets to just add. So let's see. We want to, um, we want to do our inside, and we want to glue this down. I think we have this all done up as far as we need to. Uh, the inside, I decided I would just stamp this on the bottom in black, and then I'm going to color it. Um, you will see it while it's standing and open, but I'm okay with that. And I think we can put this down. So let's put this down first. 
So to put this down, you're going to just put your adhesive, whatever you want, and you're gonna lay it down like this and you're just gonna close it, okay? And then it will magically be in place. All right, so let's get a piece of scrap. I think this might be a little big. And we have our stamp and our black memento ink. I'm just going to ink it up and stamp it right down there. So of course you want to stamp it before you stick it. It would be hard to stamp. I, I guess it would be okay, but if you make a mistake, then it's stuck, right? So you want to stamp before you stick. That's a good, good thing to have in mind. So we'll just color the leaves. I'm using, what is it? Light mossy meadow, right? Yep. Light mossy meadow. I just had to, oh, this is dry. I just bought a new one. I must have the old one. Let me just get it. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So our stamp and blend markers are alcohol markers and they do dry out. And when they dry out, you just have to buy new ones. And they come in a set of two, a light and a dark. Um, I have the dark over there. So when mine dried out, I just bought a new one. Our stamp and write markers, those are the round ones that, you know, you can roll. <laughs> Let me get one. These, these are water-based and you can refill them with um, your ink refill the ones that you would use on your stamp pads, you can also add ink to these, but these you just have to buy new ones. They're not that expensive, so it's not bad, and they do last a long time. But, so I'm just gonna color, I'm using the blunt end, there's a blunt end and then a kind of a marker end. And the marker end is good for filling in, you know, large spaces. And these color so beautifully, but if you're doing something small, you want this little blunt end. But they color very smoothly. And uh, I like Mossy Meadow. When it first came out, I didn't like it at all. And that was years ago, but I grew to love it. I love Old Olive as well. But I tried to pick colors that are in the paper. And if you look on your paper pack, in the back, it will tell you Mossy Meadow is one of the colors. Pretty Peacock, but I didn't think that was good uh, green for this sheet. It would be good for others. And then Lost Lagoon. So that's how I picked that color. And then I'm going to use the Dark Blackberry Bliss. And this will just, you know, tie along with the, the cardstock. I'm going to use a Sentiment in Blackberry Bliss. And then the color you know, the flowers that I added, and then just the color in the background on the paper. So we'll just color this in quick. It looks like a little tiny strip, right? That's all you need on the inside. And again, you can put, you know, a bigger sentiment on the outside, on the back, if you didn't, if you wanted to write more. <laughs> so we're going to just lay this in here. It's coming together. And... Just put some glue on this. We'll just lay this down because again, I want it to look nice with, you know, the border around it, side to side, even across the whole thing, and then top to bottom. So it just looks, so isn't that nice? So let's get the front done. I'm going to use that. Um, trying to decide exactly how I'm going to do this. So we are going to stamp um, Thinking of You Fondly, and I'm going to stamp that in Blackberry Bliss. And I have it all mounted. And this is a 7 8 by like 2 and a half, but I am going to... Um, put a, a banner on one end. So thinking of you fondly. I'm gonna do it on here. So I have the black so I can see, see where it is. So I'm gonna go over on this end, thinking of you fondly. 
and then I want to just punch. Now this punch is retired, and I really try not to use retired products because you can't get them. <laughs> um, but I am not giving up this punch. It's my favorite punch to use. I'm going to go in a little bit more. What you could do, which I just really struggle with, so that's why I'm holding on to my punch. You can cut down the middle and then cut and cut. And what I do when I do that is I cut one side wrong and then I cut the other side wrong and then it's just a crazy thing. So maybe we should put this down here or up here. What do you think? It looks good up there. Yeah, I think I'll put it up here. And I will put that on with um, dimensionals. And we only want to put dimensionals on this side. We don't want them on the part that's hanging over because if we do that, it'll close the card. So I'm putting them right against each other. And these are strong, so you don't need to put a ton of them on. Wouldn't you love to get this? You know, if, you know, just somebody you haven't talked to in a while or somebody who's sick. Very pretty. And then let's put just a little bit of glue on this, on the bigger pieces. And I would say that some of the pieces, well, it's not really hanging over. If it was hanging over, you wouldn't want to put glue out here, but I think we're okay. So I'm going to just put it really on the, the bigger flower pieces. And just a little bit. And just put it in there. just like this. So the big talk of the neighborhood was that we had a big, huge black bear. Um, somebody saw it early in the morning and then someone saw it about six o'clock in the evening. Um, beautiful, beautiful black bear. I mean, it looked like it was groomed <laughs> almost. Um, but made me a little nervous because I take my Bailey out, my dog, early in the morning and I take him out after dinner and I don't know what would happen if we ran into the bear. I would think the dog would try to attack it. The bear would come after him. I don't know. <laughs> I keep having this in my mind. What would I see if I saw it like, you know, walking down the street? He looked very calm walking around. Um, I'm sure he got into some garbage because it was garbage night, but he didn't get into mine. So let me get some, I think we'll tie, tie a bow on this. So I have my linen thread and I'm wondering if I should just do one or two. Sometimes I do three strands, but maybe I'll just do two and see how it looks. It's pretty dainty, so one would probably do it. But let's see. Let's see how it looks. I just want to I have to get more of the beeswax. You can run it along beeswax to straighten it out a little bit. And uh, I have to get more because I can't find it. There's certain things that I just lost in the move. But if you just run it on your fingers, it does kind of uncurl it a little bit. So I have the two pieces and I'm just going to tie a pretty bow. Let's see. I don't want it to be too big, but I think I want long tails. I'm gonna put it right there. Well, I guess not too long, it'll be off the card. Right there. All right, so let's get a blue dot. I have one right here. I gotta cut this off. So I just kind of roll it in a ball, stick it on the back, and then we'll put it right here. What do you think? Pretty, right? I don't even know if it needs any bling. I don't think it does. 
I guess I could put something up here, but I'm going to leave it. I think it's just nice the way it is. So it will sit up like this. So if you're looking at it, it will look like this if you have it up on a shelf or something. And um, you can put it like this and put it in the card and then they can, if you want to write on it or whatever. But again, your writing will be seen if you want to just stamp something or just leave it alone. You could even put another piece of this here if you wanted to um, not write it and just put a sentiment back there. I don't know what I'm going to do, so I'm leaving it for now. So aren't they pretty, though? So this is the... Um, on my calendar so this is the square column fun fold um next week we're doing a fun fold gift card holder and then we're making a pocket card and we'll be done with may so if you want my calendar you can subscribe to my email list there's a link below for that as well and then you know i make some of these i every friday i do a fun fold and i always do a sketch and i do a color combo and then the other ones i may or may not do um, so they're just ideas to inspire you and I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I will see you next Friday. Have a good week. Bye.